Hi, everyone. Thank you once again for joining us on another episode of the Coffee with Coaches podcast. I'm your host, Michael Pacheco, and today with me, I have Margie Worrell. Uh, Dr. Margie Worrell is a global authority on living with courage and unlocking the potential fear holds dormant. A best-selling author of five books, Margie gets to the heart of why we so often fail to do the very things that would help us thrive, sharing down-to-earth advice on how we can be braver in our work, relationships, leadership, and life itself. Margie, welcome to the podcast. It's great to be with you, Michael. Yeah, thank you so much for joining us. Let's dive right into the questions. Number one, why did you become a coach? I became a coach because having (laughs) unpacked a lot of my own baggage, I just felt really called and passionate about helping other people really unpack the, the, the stories and the fears that keep them from living the biggest version of the lives they have it within them to live. I love that. That's a, yeah, that's a good answer. I think everybody's got a little bit of of baggage that they're carrying around with them. <laughs> yeah. And, and let's be clear here. <laughs> I, I, it would be untrue to say, oh, I have none left. I think we've continually, as we go through life, we're peeling back the layers of the onion. There's always something else that's getting in our own way. But certainly for me, in my, I was in my 20s and I was working in the corporate world and I moved to Papua New Guinea and I found myself continually being the confidant of a lot of people who were smart and capable and incredibly had enormous potential, but just so many of their own um, paradigms and belief systems and fears of, of not being worthy were getting in their way. And so I decided I wanted to go back to school and study and kind of expand my toolkit to help, to help people get out of their own way. I love that. That's great. Okay. Moving on to question number two. What are you doing in your coaching business today that's unique? I kind of struggled a little bit with this. I'm like, what am I doing that's unique? I think every we, we're all unique, so we're going to go about our businesses differently. Mm-hmm. I think for me, probably, I've had so much advice over the years to obviously get very niche, like exactly who do you help? And I understand all of the logic behind that. I've struggled to do that. For me, it's really a psychographic versus a demographic. I help people be braver. I help people who want to make a change or take a chance, but they're struggling with the fear of what will happen if they do. And so I think for me, I've really focused my coaching practice, my business. And obviously I do, I do a lot of speaking and writing and other things too, really, really around helping people find their courage and back themselves more and doubt themselves less. Mm-hmm. Nice. Very nice. How do you just a quick aside? This isn't one of the questions, but just out of curiosity, how do you how do people know if there's something that they want to do that they're not brave enough to do? Because I feel like, you know, maybe that that's something that's because they're restless awareness. Right. And they may not have that. Yeah. But, you know, there's a lot of people. I mean, any area of our lives in which we can't give ourselves a good, you know, a, a, at least a, a high B plus and, and working toward an A is sure. an area of our lives that we're we're not we're not really thriving. And yeah. and so you talk to anyone who is like they maybe they're miserable in their job or they're struggling in a relationship or their health and well-being or financially. And it's like, okay, what's getting in the way of this getting better? And underneath all of that will be fear in some shape or form. And so people know it. Like, what would you do if you were being brave? And people go, oh, you hear people say, oh, what I would do is this. (laughs) I just, it's all so overwhelming and so hard and so intimidating. Sure. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. All right. Question number three, how do you find your clients? No, I don't really find my clients anymore. I did. I mean, when I was starting out, which is like 18 years ago, I started out in coaching. Mm -hmm. These days, clients find me, to be honest. But Mm -hmm. going back to when I did start out, I had moved to the United States two years earlier. I had zero network in the US. I was a stay-at-home mom with four kids. So Mm -hmm. I I didn't start a coaching business with a a, a ready-made platform or network. So I would go out and give talks everywhere. I would give free talks at, oh gosh, parent clubs and lions clubs and, you know, women's groups and anywhere where people were looking for a free speaker or whether they weren't. And I would offer myself up to just to speak for free. And I would offer everyone who went along a a free coaching session. That's how I got started. And that's how I certainly got my clients in the, in those first 
couple of years and then mm-hmm. since that time I mean I've I've written five books now I do a lot of speaking I write for Forbes I have a podcast etc and so people you know over time you plant enough seeds and you know you start to bear fruit and and people hear about you and find you and so so yeah the answer to that question now is different than what it was when I was starting out it sounds like the answer to that question is maybe good good branding over a long term <laughs> yeah, I definitely have played the long game. Absolutely, Michael. And I think anyone who goes into coaching thinking they're going to uh, very quickly replace their salary or quickly build a big thriving coaching business is likely to find themselves feeling a little bit uh, demoralized or disillusioned because it takes time. And so much of it is is you, the word of mouth, you know, propagating those ripples over time as people hear about you. And mm-hmm. I always just say to people, go in there with a strong sense of purpose and, and just know that it, it is going to take time to plant the seeds and for those seeds to germinate and grow. For sure. For sure. Moving on to question number four, what is the biggest challenge that you face as a coach? Oh, that's a good one. And and my challenges have evolved over time too. Uh, in the beginning, it would have been finding clients or having anyone want to pay me money. And and these days, I think it's really just deciding where to put my big my focus. You know, what is it going to make the biggest impact? We you, we would know the Pareto principle. You know, twenty percent of the effort produces eighty percent of the outcome. But you know, if I'm looking at it through the lens of how do I make the, the biggest difference in the maximum number of lives. For me, sometimes that's actually not necessarily doing one-on-one coaching. It's just that'll, that's a part of it, but it's also doing other things. So it's just trying to get that balance right all the time. And, and that, and that, and that morphs and ebbs and flows. And so, but staying focused on what really makes the biggest impact is probably my biggest challenge. Mm-hmm. Question number five, if you had a do-over in your coaching business, what would that be? I reckon it would probably be to have uh, been a little bit more systemized and systematic from the get-go and probably creating better systems for even after I finished working with clients to create maybe a community, a way of just really staying in touch and supporting people, even when long after they've stopped paying me to be a coach over the long haul. Some people have absolutely stayed in my community and I see their names pop up on my Facebook you know, feed after I've, you know, posted something or, or follow me on other, other social media, but other people I have lost touch with. And I wished I'd been a little bit more systematic and deliberate in just making sure I, I, I stayed in the orbit and other people stayed in my orbit over time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a, that's a good one. How, how do you, how do you stay in orbit in other people's orbits today? Look, I, I mean, honestly, largely, I mean, I have a, a Live Bravely newsletter that people get on my website and, and when I have clients, they sign up for, but also just social media, you know, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and sometimes I initially become friends with people, not always, but 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 just <laughs> we'll just by, by, and I've also got a private Facebook page, community page for people who've attended my live brave events. And so but all mm-hmm. those different ways I stay in there, they, they're all, but they stay in mine. The, the usual suspects. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. And now for the bonus question, what is one book that you recommend all your clients read? Whoa, that's, that's a great one. And, and honestly, it varies a little bit by client. You know, if they're an artist, I'll tell them to read Stephen Pressfield's The War of Art. You know, if they're creative and they want to just express themselves in the world some way. So The War of Art is a big one for me. For people who are on a spiritual journey, it's always something Wayne Dyer. But for other people who are struggling with a lot of hurt and wounds, it's Marianne Williamson's A Return to Love. But of course, you know, I always recommend people read my books too. And my and I think my last book, You've Got This, is frankly the book that I actually just give it to all my clients because I, I it, it really encapsulates my my own hard-won wisdom. So yeah, I, I hate to be so, so, sounding so self-promotional there but these days it, it's 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 you've got this awesome that's great i like i also like the, the the press field mentioned there i've got war of art is is one of the small handful of books that i keep right directly on my desk yeah 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 i mean i honestly i mean if it's different people for different janine roth for people with eating food body challenges and and lynn twist for people with money financial struggles and you know there's different books i think really suit where different people are at and will speak to them and have an impact in different ways so yeah i I like to be versatile for sure awesome margie is there anything that you would like to add or pitch or promote before we go and also where can people connect with you online 
Oh, well, look, thanks for asking. Obviously, I just pitched my book. So I don't need to pitch you've got this again or any of my books, but I would just encourage people, sign, get onto my, my website, margiewarrell.com, sign up for my, my newsletter. Or if you hang out anywhere on social media, please just reach out and connect, follow me there. I would just love to love to stay spinning in your orbit too. Beauty. Margie Worrell, thank you so much for joining us on this episode of Coffee with Coaches. And thank you to our audience for tuning in. We will see you all next time. Thank you, Michael.